Hi everyone, nice to see you again. Uh, today uh, we are going to learn lecture number 10. Um, we will talk about the career counseling. That's one of the, uh, the area in counseling uh, and also the career counseling is important uh, because it uh, covers the whole life span right now. So uh, we will talk about the uh, the many different counseling, career counseling related issue today. Uh, let's take a look at some uh, objective, the lecture number 10. Uh, the first one, we'd like to identify some characteristics of career development. Well, when we talk about the career, we have a tendency to, to think a career as just a career decision. Uh, Probably that is related with the Korean culture. Uh, when we talk about the, uh, the career counseling, it is misunderstood uh, in Korean society like only um, just the jillo, jido, or ipshi, like this. Uh, but actually, the career development uh, is, is covering the whole lifespan, actually. So uh, we'll talk about some uh, characteristics of career development. The second one is compare different theories explaining career development. Well, we uh, reviewed uh, many different issues with major conceptual the framework. However, this uh, career counseling theory particularly has very specific uh, career uh, counseling theories like here, trait factor theory, personality type theory, and psychodynamic uh, and lifespan and social cognitive theory. So it's pretty uh, different theories compared to the general counseling theories. So we will talk about uh, these different uh, the career theories today. And finally, we will talk about how to use career related information for uh, our client. So probably how can we uh, provide some career-related information, and also how can we assess students' ability and students' attitude and students' value and their interest as well. So uh, these are the, uh, the outlines of objective for today. The first slide shows the career development throughout the lifespan. Let's take a look at this, uh, the figure here, it shows some uh, development of career issue from early childhood, childhood and adolescent, and early adulthood and adulthood right here. So uh, you may be uh, wondering, wow, is there any career issue in early childhood, even in that period? Uh, yes, because even early childhood, like a preschooler, um, they are still developing their career issue. For example, uh, they have a kind of fantasy. Uh, well, I'd like to be a, a professional uh, a baseball player. Uh, they don't really know about, know about you know, what would be the qualification, what kind of abilities they have to have, what would be their income, and what would be the social uh, status of the professional basketball uh, baseball player. But they have some fantasy, and based on the fantasy, they develop uh, the interest on them. So even early childhood and childhood, in their level, they have their own career developmental issue. Uh, and adolescent and also, you know, they are explore, exploring many different career issues. And early adulthood, this is the time that they uh, begin to decide the career path. So they begin to work in a certain the setting and they still explore. So uh, career development is not only a certain point issue, this is a developmental issue as well. So this is a lifelong process and this involves many different life role. For example, as a, uh, as, as a child in a family, they observe a father and mother's uh, career. Uh, as a student, they also 
observe a teacher's and other professions uh, characteristics. Uh, and as an internship student, they experience many different uh, characteristics and profession. So the, when they develop their career uh, issue, uh, their roles are uh, intertwined in understanding and recognizing the characteristics of uh, career issue. And also it involves uh, psychological and economical and social aspect of the person. Uh, so when they uh, make decision about their career, they will take into account all different components. For example, I work at the uh, Department of Education at the College of uh, education and we annually accept about 500 students uh, and most of them wanted to be uh, a teacher in public school or private school and or some of them wanted to be uh, some uh, different role like educational specialist anyway but I would say like more than like 90 percent of the uh, student in the College of Education uh, wants to be a uh, school. And they made a decision. Uh, they chose that uh, College of Education and their own major. Uh, if you look at these three components here, psychological uh, issue, because they uh, usually show pretty interest in teaching and they are uh, more interested in um, showing uh, and interacting with students. So it shows that their uh, um, psychological characteristics of enjoying uh, working with people and uh, teaching someone else and types of things. And also economical and because uh, the College of Education uh, is pretty uh, popular uh, major uh, because um, the teacher in Korea uh, has very uh, stability in uh, economy. Uh, their income is are pretty stable, and uh, the government guarantee you know the higher le you know um, up to like a sixty uh, three years old, and uh, so they prefer uh, being a teacher because of economic reason, and also social aspect in Korean society. Uh, we still have some uh, respect for the teacher. Oh, teachers are different because teachers are teacher. So uh, when they make decision, they consider like uh, their own interest, like from psychological perspective. They also consider some economic stability and also some social respect. So the career development is are uh, interrelated with the other uh, component as well. So I wanted to stress career development is not only career decision at the high school. It's a whole the lifespan career, the, uh, the development process. Let's take a look at the, uh, each theory. Uh, the first theory that we want to review is the trait and factor approach. Uh, it was uh, espoused by the uh, Frank Parsons. Uh, we actually uh, uh, read this person when we reviewed the whole counseling history in the beginning of the semester. Uh, he, was the, uh, he was called as a father of counseling because he was the first person who initiated counseling at school. And if you look at his theory, it, uh, it's, uh, it says individual's unique trait can be measured, discussed, and examined. And if you look at the second one, occupations necessitate that individual have a certain trait. So trait factor approach is something uh, that try to, to match individual's trait and jobs to characteristics. So if I explain in, in the figure here, for example, um, So the trait factor theory is try to match between uh, their trait and uh, 
factor. So thread is a, is a personal uh, and factor is a job characteristic. So uh, the first thing in this perspective is to examine what would be a person's trait, this part. What, a per, what would be a person's interest, their attitude, and their abilities, and their value system. And then also they try to uh, see some other side from job description Okay, a certain job has a certain uh, characteristics. So they try to find some matching component. Okay, so uh, the two major things. The first one is to try to examine a person's trait first, and then they try to uh, investigate uh, factors that are some job related information, and they try to match. So if we match well, so if we overlap much more like this, and then a person will be uh, uh, satisfied by the, the, by the job. So if you look at here, uh, the better the ability of the individual to match his or her trait to occupation, the greater the likelihood the individual will have success and feel satisfied. So they try to increase the amount of overlap between a person's trait and the job factor. That is the trait and factor approach. It's sometimes it's called matching theory. The next one is, uh, is similar to the uh, trait and factor theory, but it's a personality theory. Uh, it's by John Holland, and he uh, categorized six different personality type. So sometimes it's called uh, type theory. So if you look at this hexagon here, uh, it shows six different uh, personality. The first one is a realistic, and so it's called R, and investigative, I, and artistic, A, and social, S, and enterprising E and conventional C. So um, sometimes it's called the RIASEC, the, the first acronym, uh, acronym like R I A S E C. So it's, it's easy to uh, memorize, like a RIASEC. Um, so the six personality and work type. So in this theory, uh, Holland categorized six different personality type. And he believed that each personality type has a better uh, and better matched work uh, characteristic. So that is a kind of uh, based on the matching theory, but his theory is more uh, advanced because he categorized the whole uh, personality and work type uh, into six different categorizations. So if you look at the uh, textbook, it explains each uh, the personal characteristics, uh, some, uh, some description. If you look at uh, the box 11.1, for example, if, let me read the, uh, this part, the social, uh, the personality type. Uh, the social people are nurturer, helper, and uh, caregiver, and have a high concern for others. So they are interested in uh, giving something to others. Uh, so their personality is something, um, is more uh, relationship oriented. Uh, they try to help, they try to nurture, uh, they try to assist someone else. And they are introspective and insightful and prefer work environment in which they can use their uh, intuitive and caregiving skill. So, they also, this theory suggests some uh, information about the work type. So from this social type of person would uh, work better in the setting in which you might find social people or um, government, social service agency, counseling office, 
church, schools, mental hospital, recreation centers, personal offices, and hospital. So uh, Holland uh, categorized six different personality and work type. So better the match, the more satisfaction at the job. So this part is the, uh, the idea uh, uh, Holland borrowed from the, uh, the Frank Parson. And hexagon model trade, uh, trade closer to one another, one another and more like one another, which means in this case, if someone has a, st a strong social personality here, and then the person would have higher, next to higher level of score from E and A, because they are uh, kind of connected. Uh, and also, the person would have lower level of a score than the opposite characteristic, like a realistic or conventional and investigative. Let me give you, let me show some example here. It shows one example, uh, test result of a person who took the, uh, uh, the career uh, personality test by Holland. If you look at here, it shows that uh, this, okay, reset. If you look at this, what score is the highest one? We have some, uh, uh, this realistic, is very high, uh, so this one is very high. And, and actually, if you look at the number here, it's a 46, so I think that was the highest score. And C was the next highest one, is a 45, okay? And, and then 35 is I, the next one is, is this is number one, uh, this number one and number two, and this is number three then. Okay, and so this one, this one, this area shows that a, that particular person's career, a personality type, and this was the highest one. And as it shows it, the opposite way, like uh, social, this one is very uh, low score, and also artistic, this is also low. So this shows some typical uh, test result of a person from this perspective. And uh, as I said, this theory not only explains the personality type, but also some better matched job. So if you look at the, uh, the right side, it shows what would be better the job for this particular person based on this result. Uh, if you look at here, these are the high, uh, like army and food and engineering and medical and some uh, some gene, uh, and also information science and administration types of thing, because these are the, the jobs that require some skills and from this realistic, some, you know, uh, these objective information, some investigative, the scale types of thing. So uh, from this Holland theory, compared to the trade and factor, the Holland uh, categorize six different uh, the characteristic and when you have uh, when you take a test it shows some hexagon model like this and next one is psychodynamic uh, the theory and one of the person in in, in this perspective is Anne Rowe and she believed uh, a person's career decision and actually influenced by the past experience. You know, we reviewed many different uh, psychodynamic approach, uh, Freud and Adler and uh, Mahler and also some other related information, always focused on some past experience as a part of the determinism. So the career choice based on type of parenting received. So role uh, identified six different uh, parenting style, like a protective, uh, demanding, rejecting, neglecting, and casual and loving. Now if you look at this, uh, uh, the figure, I just uh, cut it uh, and paste here from your uh, textbook in figure 11.3. Uh, 
Uh, it shows some uh, dynamic relationship between parenting style and some other uh, the related job. So the row identifies six different parenting style and also eight different orientation of the work. So it's, it's also better, it also shows some better match between uh, parenting style and some, some job characteristic. But she believed the, uh, the orientation to the work is related with the parenting and parenting is, uh, their, is based on their past experience. For example, uh, if someone has some uh, the loving relationship with the major caregiver when the person was very young, so always uh, the parents was very responsive. Uh, when a child wanted to, to go somewhere, they always you know uh, respond. So they went together, and uh, their need were satisfied. The parents, uh, so the person is pretty. Uh, the getting something from the relationship with the caregiver by this loving parenting style. And she believed that if someone is, um, uh, is grown at the family of loving parenting style and that particular person will prefer uh, working uh, uh, in the setting of using that relationship oriented. Uh, business. So they may, they may prefer working at the uh, um, hospital to help, you know, patient and like a counselor or social worker and even teacher. So uh, their past experience were related. However, if someone was, um, was, uh, someone was grown up in the, uh, the, the other side, so if their uh, needs are not really met, and if the teacher, if the parents were not responsive to the to the uh, children, and that those particular children will choose not human related and rela not really relationship oriented business. It's more administrative uh, and some engineering related. So anyway, the basic idea of this theory explained that our career decision based on our past experience, in particular the person's, the, the parenting style. And the next theory is uh, one of the, uh, the major theory in career counseling right now. It's called uh, Lifespan uh, Approach by Donald Super. Uh, Donald Spur is a um, major figure right now in career counseling and our the Korean educational uh, system adopted his theory. So that's why uh, now we teach some career related uh, education even in elementary throughout the uh, middle and high school and college. Let's take a look at the characteristic here. Career development is an ongoing continuous and Orderly, uh, which means even earlier age. You know, at the first slide, actually, I adopted idea from the uh, Donald Super. So, career development is not only one decision-making uh, moment; it's ongoing and continuous. And self-concept is the function and result of career development. So, he stressed the uh, career development uh, from self-concept perspective. So he believed that when we make decision, if we have a better uh, concept, if we are confident on, on doing something, and then that person will, uh, will, uh, will be more likely to choose that particular uh, related job. A change in occupation levels is influenced by many factors. So uh, uh, I will show the, uh, the next figures that you know multiple influence on, on a person's decision making. Career development is assisted by helping individuals understand and develop their abilities and interests. So uh, Super believed that in each stage of our life and each stage their, uh, their each stage has different um, tasks and different role and so as a counselor 
we want to the client to uh, increase their awareness and enhance their self-concept and explore their career issue. So we facilitate their development in a career way. So that is the major, uh, the, the counselor's role from this perspective. By understanding development, counselors can pick interventions that assist individuals in their career development process. Uh, probably if you look at the uh, next uh, picture, it will uh, help you to understand the whole concept here. Let's take a look at here. This is the, uh, the whole lifespan uh, the theory. If you look at the, the, uh, the right side of the, this picture, it shows the, from the birth uh, to death. So it, it, this uh, theory explains the whole lifespan from the birth to, uh, like here, the 14. So that this period will be some, you know, like uh, elementary and early middle school. If you look at the uh, here, some characteristic, uh, some fantasy. They have, they develop uh, some fantasy about a job and they also develop some interest, a certain field, and they also develop some capacity, a certain area. And from middle school uh, to the high school, even uh, the college life, is more exploration level. Uh, so they uh, try so many different ways. You know, they experience uh, by observing others, and sometimes they uh, may participate in a certain activity uh, which are related to a certain job. So they explore so many different ways. They could compare what would be the benefit of working in this type of setting. What would be uh, the, uh, the disadvantages of working a certain types of job. So they will explore for, from 14 to 25. And you know, 25 is the, area, uh, the, the period that uh, students mm, usually graduate from the college. So this is the time uh, that they uh, start their first job. Um, and then, so they will start, you know, the establishment of the, uh, the career development. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they will be advanced, they will be promoted, and they will uh, change their job uh, into a better uh, status. Sometimes they will be frustrated uh, by experiencing these types of, you know, the both experience they will, uh, their career development will be consolidated. Uh, and uh, 45, uh, if they are able to uh, stay a certain uh, the job, and then they will, uh, you know, innovation or it's not really, you know, uh, enhanced, just a stagnation or some updating. Uh, and finally, after 60, uh, it's more retirement and specialization and disengagement. So the Donald Super showed so the whole spectrum of the career development by suggesting some different career development issue. And the counselor's role is to help a person from this perspective. So if uh, someone has you know, some fantasy and interest and cap capability here, uh, counselor's role is to encourage a person to uh, develop a certain uh, the capability and capacity. And from here, exploration. We want to provide lots of uh, like, uh, opportunity for the student to experience many different uh, roles. And establishment, you know, there is two possibility, advancement or frustration. We want to provide some positive support for the person who experienced some frustration. And also we want to uh, encourage a person's, you know, the, the progress to a certain uh, level. So it shows that the super uh, theory uh, try to see a person's career development uh, from the whole developmental perspective. The last theory that we want to, uh, to cover for today is uh, it's more the social cognitive career the theory by Crumbles and Mitchell. And this is more combination and mixture of many different theories. Uh, 
So there is a dynamic interplay between environment and internal belief system. That's why it's a cognitive area as well. Uh, so the first acronym was like SCCT. I just put down here, puts together a number of different theories. The first one is self-efficacy theory. Self-efficacy is, um, is our internal belief that we can do, uh, we can do by ourselves. It's a kind of optimism. Uh, so the types of choice we make are based on our belief about whether or not we can do certain behavior. For example, um, if someone who has high self-efficacy, uh, they made a decision based on their belief because they believe they can do it. Uh, I can do it this type of job. So they try and they achieve it. However, if someone, is, is, uh, if someone has very low self-efficacy, they confined their uh, opportunity to choose some, uh, some occupation because I don't think I can do it. I, I'm not confident. So they just uh, uh, give up a certain area. They just uh, limit their uh, the choice. So it believes that self-efficacy is really impact on their career development and career decision. So because self-efficacy is our belief and the belief is you know, cognitive domain, that's why uh, they uh, borrow the idea from the uh, cognitive uh, area. And also, it's also behavior component as well, social learning theory. Career decision making, uh, decision making is a function of learned experience and uh, clients can be taught new ways of enhancing the quality of uh, their lives. So from this perspective, counselor try to teach what would be the better uh, choice and also provide some good role model and also uh, provide some social support when they made a better decision. Try to provide some positive reinforcement for them to, to keep going uh, the forward what they really want. So they also borrow the idea from the social learning theory. The final thing is the sociological theory. Issues outside of ourselves, such as discrimination, mobility, like a disability and um, of movement, and sexism and other economy affect the types of choices a person has. So this uh, theory also considers some envi environmental influence on a person's uh, the career decision. And actually, that is true because you know uh, lots of experts identified. The person who uh, is from low, extremely low socioeconomic status, they have a very low expectation because they never seen uh, such a high level of uh, like a person. They have never had a relative who was a medical doctor or a professor or, or a CEO. They only, you know, uh, have seen some. Uh, um, some lower level of uh, occupation in terms of salary, like a, a blue collar. So they limit their expectation based on their environment, which means you know, our environment is highly related with our decision, in, in, uh, in, in particular in career decision. So this uh, theory uh, try to integrate this perspective as well. So we uh, reviewed four different uh, the theories here. And the final uh, slide show how can we use this in, uh, the career-related information uh, for our student. The first, uh, the three uh, information show uh, some website and some uh, information uh, and manual. So we can uh, find some information about the, uh, uh, the career. Uh, ONET online, an ONET dictionary of occupational title, and guide for occupational exploration, GOE, and occupational outlook handbook, OOH. Our textbook also shows some of the uh, URL of the, all of these sites. So I uh, recommend you to uh, the visit of these three websites to uh, look for some information. For example, uh, 
if you are majoring in uh, nursing, uh, if you want to know how much they make, uh, make for that particular job, you can type the nurse and that, it will, that particular website will show what would be the qualification, what would be the salary level, what would be the uh, you know, educational requirement. So it will show all you know, related information uh, for, for the uh, particular job. Uh, and also we have many different websites, even in Korean uh, websites. So I also uh, encourage you to explore some other uh, occupational classification system as well in Korea. The next three uh, assessment instruments show how can we assess student uh, career related component, for example, uh, interest, uh, career interest. We can use some self-directed search, it's called SDS, and we can also assess their aptitude, like a differential aptitude test. We can also assess their personality uh, by Myers-Briggs type indicator. It's called MBTI. Uh, you may be familiar with the, this uh, MBTI test, which is pretty popular even in Korean uh, society. So uh, we can also use this type of result, uh, assessment result, to identify uh, their trait. Because uh, trait and factor theory, we believe that if we know better about a person's trait, we can introduce the better match the job. Okay, uh, Holland's type theory is also uh, is related, but uh, he categorized in six different uh, the personality and type characteristics. We also talked about the psychodynamic approach. So uh, Rowe believed that uh, the a person's past experience, in particular, parenting style is is critical. We also talked about the whole lifespan uh, development theory by Super, and also we talked about some. A mixture of different theory by Crumbles and Michel. It's called social cognitive career theory. So today uh, we talked about some career related issue and our next uh, lecture we will talk about uh, some testing and some, uh, some assessment related issue uh, uh, in the next lecture. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and uh, if you have any question, please post your question. I hope I'd like to respond to your question. So uh, see you on the next lecture.